So, Intel's 11th gen Rocket Lake CPUs were just released a few weeks ago, and the general consensus with most reviewers were that these CPUs weren't that great, and most of them didn't really recommend the 11th gen series. And the public perception of these CPUs weren't that great either, and it was so bad that Intel even slashed prices for the 11700K just a few days after launch, which is something that I've really never seen before from Intel, or even AMD for that matter. You don't really see a brand new CPU being launched, then just slashed in price a few days after launch, unless it was really horrible and they had to do something about it to keep it competitive with the competitors, and even against Intel's previous 10th gen CPUs, which are really on a fire sale these days, basically a really good deal whenever you find them. But yeah, with the 11th gen series, most reviewers focus on the 11900K, 11700K, and even the 11600K, all the K-series CPUs, which are the highest end ones that you can buy from Intel, that Intel wants you to see and you know buy from them. But the actual good CPUs from the 11th gen series are not the highest end ones. You see, with the 11th gen series, Intel only launched the Core i9, i7, and the i5 range. And the i9 is basically a pointless CPU, and it's just something to please the investors to say like, hey look, we have a new i9 CPU, but it's not actually better than the previous 10th gen i9 because it only has eight cores instead of 10 cores, and it uses more power, and it's not great at overclocking. Well, it's a mess. And lots of reviewers agree you shouldn't buy that CPU. If you want an eight core 11th gen series CPU, you should buy the 11700K. And even then, lots of reviewers didn't like it, like say, Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unbox, who didn't really like that CPU. But even then, that CPU wasn't well loved by the reviewers, especially because the launch price was so high, which is the main reason why they slashed the price a few days after launch. But in my opinion, it's still not that great of a buy because you could just buy an 8-core 10700K for a really low price these days for an 8-core Intel CPU, which is an amazing deal. But the real gem of the 11th gen lineup is the 11th gen 11400F CPU from Intel, the Core i5 series. Now, the thing is, with the 11th gen CPUs, they do have unlocked models like the 11600K for the Core i5 series, as well as the 11600KF, but those CPUs, because of Intel trying to keep up with AMD, were really pushed all the way to the limit, just on the red line straight out of the factory, which means that they barely have any kind of overclocking headroom, and if you don't really have overclocking headroom on a K-series CPU, why would you even buy it? Like, I haven't seen a reviewer that could get past 5 gigahertz on the 11600K, and that CPU costs like $70 more than something like an 11400. And the 11400 is only a few hundred megahertz off the 11600K at stock speeds if you don't overclock the 11600K. So if you don't overclock, why even pay more for the more expensive K-series CPUs? And if the difference between the 11600K and the 11400 is only a few hundred megahertz, why even pay for the 11500, which is in the middle of those two? So the, the more sensible choice is just buying the 11400 CPU. And that's the real good CPU from the 11 Gen series, because the 11400F is an iteration or an upgrade to the 10400F CPU from Intel. Which back then, the 10400F was a really great CPU still, and it still is these days. But the glaring flaw with the 10400F that kept lots of reviewers from really recommending it and Gamers Nexus from outright not really recommending it for gamers is that it couldn't run high-speed DDR4 memory unless you buy an expensive Z-series motherboard, which makes no sense to pair with a cheap Core i5 like that. So you really lose a lot of gaming performance from using really slow memory compared to AMD's Ryzen 5 3600, for example, which you could clock way higher memory onto it. So. With this 11th gen generation, Intel launched the B560 motherboard, which is really the biggest upgrade in this generation because Intel finally allowed memory overclocking on their non-Z motherboards. I have no idea why Intel hasn't done this in such a long time because AMD has allowed this since forever to overclock on their non-X series motherboards, overclock their RAM and even their CPUs for AMD, but the most important part is overclocking your RAM because when you buy a RAM kit from Amazon, Newegg, or whatever, AliExpress even, you see like a 3200 megahertz speed rating, that's the overclocked speed. And you usually achieve that overclock speed by using XMP, which is a profile that you can apply in the BIOS. But that's considered an overclock with Intel, and without using a C-series motherboard, 
you could only run at the spec speed, which for the 1400F is only 2666 MHz, which is abysmally slow compared to the cheap DDR4 3000 plus memory kits you could get these days for basically the same price. So it really crippled the gaming performance and made it just trade blows with the 3600 and most of the time on average just get beaten out by the Ryzen 5 3600 in games unless you have really fast memory, which you could check out Gamers Nexus review for more info on that. But with this generation, because of the overclockable memory on the B560 motherboards, which are some of the cheaper ones, the 11400F and the 10400F suddenly become really good gaming CPUs. For example, the 11400F is only $170 on Amazon, which is only $20 increase from the 10400F. And with that, you get 19% IPC increase, which is what Intel claimed and is verified by lots of reviewers. And you also get newer PCIe 4.0 connectivity as well as 20 PCIe lanes compared to 16 lanes. So if you're buying a new gaming PC, there really isn't a better choice at a below $200 price point for a CPU that's meant for gaming because AMD doesn't have competition in here. For example, the Ryzen 5 3600, which is their closest price CPU, is just a little over $200 these days and they're kind of hard to find because they're kind of, you know, last generation and AMD is focusing on the Ryzen 5000 series, which on the cheapest one is the Ryzen 5 5600, which is over $300 on the best days. So AMD doesn't have competition below $200 price point and the 11400F is just right there to take that market by storm. And this CPU has six cores, 12 threads, and with an unlocked TDP, which you could do on most B560 motherboards, you don't need a Z-series motherboard for that, you could clock it up as high as 4.2 gigahertz at full load, as seen by reviews like Optimum Tech and Hardware Unbox, and that really gives it a really good gaming performance, especially with the IPC increase at 4.2 gigahertz, you're looking at gaming performance that's really close to the 11600K and 10600K, which are one of the, you know, some of the best gaming CPUs out there. And you're really only losing a couple of frames compared to those while costing much, much cheaper. And in fact, because it's also clocked lower, these 11400F CPUs and the lower clock i5s, they're much closer to the sweet spot in the voltage frequency range. And because of that, they don't output as much heat and are much more efficient, which is much better than the K-series Rocket Lake CPUs, which are notorious for running really hot and consuming a lot of power because Intel just put their foot on the gas and didn't stop and clocked them up all the way to like 5 gigahertz trying to keep up with AMD, which just ruins the efficiency and makes them consume way too much power. So these 11400F, again, are a really good CPU in terms of performance, but also in terms of efficiency, because in reviews, they don't consume much more than just 100 watts for the CPUs, which is much more sane than the 11600K and 11700K, which consumes upwards of 200 watts if you, you know, loaded them fully with AVX workloads. So again, for a budget CPU, there really isn't anything better than this, because I wouldn't even get a 10400F these days, because even though it's $20 cheaper, you don't get, you know, the PCIe 4.0 connectivity, and you also don't get 20 PCIe lanes which means that you can't put an extra M.2 drive directly to your CPU, whereas with the 11400F, you can have a 16x GPU slot and you can have a 4x slot for an M.2 drive, which you know, in the current market landscape, you're not buying any high-end GPUs anytime soon, so why not splurge on a nice M.2 NVMe drive to put on your system? So with this 11400F, it really just, I think, solidifies Intel's position in the market as a really solid and good value CPU maker, and a great choice for budget builds. While AMD is the outright performance crown, and if you want the outright best performance for your computer, you should buy an AMD CPU regardless of price. Which is a really weird thing to say, because just a few years ago, it was the complete opposite with Intel having the best performance outright and AMD having a good value. But yeah, how the tables have turned, right? But anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and gave you some insights on why I think Intel's 11400F is the real gem of the 11th gen lineup and why you should buy them even though Rocket Lake is a crappy architecture for CPUs. But yeah, let me know what you think on the comment down below and if you do like this video, maybe click the like button and maybe click subscribe to see more of my future videos as well. Thank you for watching.